During the Bobby Fischer era, the Soviets dominated chess. The real enemy they had was Bobby Fischer. But there was another player in the West who was really, really great, an elite player, almost Fischer's level, by the name of Bent Larson, one of the most creative and innovative players the game has ever seen. He always found new ways to play the game, original ideas. He would probably be very comfortable in the modern era. And this is a game played between Fisher and Bent Larson. Fisher has white, Bent Larson has black. It is a dragon Sicilian, so you know it's going to be double edged and sharp. Let's jump right in. Fisher begins with e4, Bent Larson begins with c5. The Sicilian defense, knight f3, d6, d4, cd4, knight d4, knight f6, knight c3, and g6. The key move in the dragon Sicilian. Named the Dragon Sicilian, I believe, because of this pawn structure looking something like a dragon, or the constellation Draco, to be more precise. Now, bishop to e3. This is the main strategy white used against the dragon then, and it is the main strategy white uses now. It's called the Yugoslav attack. The idea is you play queen to d2 and trade off the dark squared bishops, castle long, and then advance the h-pawn, open up the h-file, and deliver checkmate. It's that simple, but sometimes not so simple. Bishop to g7 was played. A big blunder, by the way, knight to g4. We don't want to play that move, because a bishop to b5 check actually wins a piece, because a bishop to, to d7, the queen can just take the knight on g4, because this bishop at d7 is pinned to its own king. So you don't do that. You play bishop to g7, f3, strengthens the e-pawn, controls the g4 square, so now knight to g4 cannot be played at all. Castle short, queen to d2, preparing this bishop h6 idea to trade off that valuable dark squared bishop. Knight to c6, and here, bishop to c4. Uh, the idea behind bishop to c4, of course, it places the bishop on a, a strong diagonal, but it's the first goal is to prevent black from playing d5. In other lines, black can play d5, and usually... Uh, Black does fairly well if they can get the d5 move in. So he stops that. Bishop d4, bishop takes d4, and bishop to e6. A very interesting approach, approach that became unpopular, but has recently emerged. And Ishigiri actually recommended this approach in his chessable course on the dragon. Uh, so we'll see how Fisher handles this. Uh, you can take on e6, f e6, um, and this is definitely playable for white. Uh, but black has his trumps. In addition to the weak e6 square, he does control a lot of key squares on uh, his own fourth rank. So it's definitely playable for both sides. Uh, but Fisher just retreats the bishop back to b3. Bent Larson plays queen to a5. Uh, the queen does a lot of things on a5, puts pressure on the c3 knight against the king, hits a2, can come to the king's side, supports a b5 advance. A strong move. Fisher castles long ready now to advance his kingside pawns to attack black's king. b5. The attack begins. Bent Larson wants to displace this knight on c3 so he can continue his attack. King to b1 to keep the a2 square protected. b4 hits the knight. The knight goes to d5. Bent Larson takes with the bishop. And here, uh, Fisher actually thought after the game he should have taken with the e-pawn. Uh, he felt that was better. Anish Giri's recommendation here, by the way, is after queen to b5, he wants to advance the a pawn, is rook h to e1, hitting the e7 pawn, and then after a5, queen to e2, really forcing the exchange of queens, otherwise the uh, e7 pawn would fall, and after the queens are exchanged, a4, bishop c4, rook f c8, b3, rook to c7, defends e7, and here, uh, black has a playable position as it turns out. But in the game, Fisher went ahead and took with the bishop uh, instead. Here, rook a to c8 was played. Probably the first real mistake from black. Uh, better was probably knight takes d5. Um, if bishop takes g7, then the knight can go to c3 with check. Pawn, a bishop takes, pawn takes, queen takes. And here, white's up a pawn. But black has plenty of counterplay to make up for that. These pawns on the queen side are just too weak. And if, uh, excuse me, if e d5, then queen takes d5, queen to b4. Uh, this is probably just an equal position. This is what Fisher said he would play 
if black had uh, played into this line. But instead, Bent Larson plays rook a to c8. The bishop retreats back to b3, and Fisher said he was not going to give his opponent a second chance to grab that bishop that was on d5. He wants to keep that open. In fact, this is where he made his famous quote that white in this position pries open the h file, sacks, sacks, and checkmates. So that's how he said this position. I just sack a couple of things, checkmate, no problem. Uh, rook to c7 is played. The problem is, after queen to b5, with the idea of playing a7, a5, a4, white can actually just take the pawn, and now there's no way to advance it. So first thing is he defends the pawn with the rook. h4, the attack begins. Queen to b5, and now this pawn can advance. h5, rook f to c8, hg6, hg6. So the first step of the Yugoslav attack has been achieved. The h-file has been opened with the advance of the h-pawn. Uh, here, he could play bishop takes f6. Bishop takes f6, queen to h6. The idea is to play queen h7, queen f7 mate, because this bishop at b3 controls this square. The problem is black can just play e6 and is actually okay in that position. So instead, Fisher plays g4 to kick away the f6 knight from the defense of the king. a5, threatening to come into a4 g5, knight to h5 to block the h-file, but Fisher, we already know, is comfortable sacrificing in this position and does so. Rook takes h5, the exchange sack, g, g h5, and uh, here, the best move for black, as it turns out, excuse me, instead of the rook takes h5, was bishop takes d4, queen d4, and g h5. Uh, we only know this because of modern computers. Fisher said after g6, white's just winning. A modern computer showed this ridiculous move. Uh, rook to c4 actually uh, holds the position for black. And, uh, you know, you're not going to see that unless you are using a computer, but uh, that was the be best defense for black. But he goes ahead and takes the rook. And now g6 is played. There is this pin on the f7 pawn, along with this bishop on b3. Uh, if e6, then gf7 check, king f7, and then. Here, black's king is laid bare, and the bishop, rook, and queen are going to eat it for lunch. So instead, Larson plays e5. Uh, blocks his own bishop, but he also blocks white's bishop. He's trying to survive this position. Gf7 check, king to f8, bishop to e3, threatening to play bishop h6 and eliminate the key defensive bishop. d5 is played by black. Um, if Fisher takes the pawn with the bishop, then after rook takes c2, black actually would find a way to survive if queen e1, queen to e2, uh, and after queen g1, queen g2, and black would actually uh, survive this position. So instead, Fisher takes with the pawn. Rook takes f7. If a4, then d6. a, b3, d, c7, and he's winning, so rook takes f7. d6 advances the pawn and attacks the rook at f7. Rook goes to f6. Bishop g5 hits the rook again. Queen to b7. He's down in exchange, so he knows he's going to have to give it back at some point. So he plays queen to b7 to put the queen in a more defensive posture, help control d7, and put some pressure on f3. Bishop takes f6, bishop f6, d7, rook to d8. And after Fisher's next move, queen to d6 check, black resigned. But Fisher himself pointed out that he actually had a quicker conclusion. He could have played queen to h6 check after king to e7, queen h7, and king f8. Queen to f7 would have been checkmate. But after queen to d6, the game is clearly over. Once the king moves over to the g-file, the rook comes, and mate is very swift. So Bent Larson just resigned after queen to d6 check. A near flawlessly executed dra attack of the dragon with the Yugoslav attack. I hope you've enjoyed the game. See you again soon at Chess Talk. Goodbye.